we are in an information war and we are losing that war. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves. To any English speaking infidels watching this, I just wanted to say that I'm still alive and very scary. I said I'd release a video for the 6th anniversary and a man of my words. If you think this is a fake, you're completely crazy. Probably one of those crazy conspiracy theorists your President Bush warns you about. You can't fake videos. Forget all this nonsense about corruption. Corruption is impossible. Hanati and Combs are totally on the right path. They know what's going on. I'm totally heaps scary. Just look at me. I'm a regular Goldstein up here. Howard Dean recently seemed to muse aloud whether you had advanced knowledge of 9-11. Do you agree or disagree with the RNC that this kind of rhetoric borders on political hate speech? Yeah. Uh, look, there's time for politics. And, uh, you know, it's time for politics. And uh, I, uh, it's an absurd insinuation. I'm aware that there's still some who would question or even justify the offense of 9-11. But let us be clear. Al-Qaeda killed nearly 3,000 people on that day. So we've never made the case or argued the case that somehow Osama bin Laden was directly involved in 9-11. That evidence uh, has never been forthcoming. U.S. officials link bin Laden to numerous terrorist attacks, including the U.S. Embassy bombings in East Africa three years ago. Last year's bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen. One of the Millennium bombing plots. And the last attack on the World Trade Center eight years ago. Not a flamboyant individual, an individual who defers to his elders and to um, religious scholars. Osama bin Laden is a name that we have been hearing all day long as an individual who may, and we emphasize may, be responsible for these terrorist acts. They now believe that bin Laden was responsible. He's probably far away in the mountains now. He's got his own communication system, which the Americans can't apparently uh, chip into in any sense. There is constant discussion about him hiding out in caves, and I think many times the American people have a perception that it's a little hole dug out of a side of a mountain. Oh, no. This is it. This is a fortress. The tall, thin bin Laden's goal, in his own words, is to unite all Muslims and establish a government which follows Islamic law. Yes. A complex, multi-tiered, bedrooms and offices on the top, as you can see. Secret exits on the side and, the end, and on the bottom. He's a very, very uh, significant figure in Islamic uh, politics, uh, certainly, and in world politics. It's a very sophisticated operation. Oh, you bet. This is serious business. And, and there's not one of those. There are many of those. He's clearly um, someone... What we must remember, though, is that this story, this understanding of our world, which was largely constructed for us in those first chaotic hours after the attacks, and which has remained largely unchanged to this day, only appears monolithic and unchallenged because it has been presented to us in a carefully constructed series of sound bites and interviews with official sources. The events of 9-11, like all major events in our 24-7 network news world, have become a mediated experience. We have been told how to understand these events by the same editors, executives, and media moguls that so obviously failed in their duties in the run-up to the war in Iraq. The truth is that the story of Al-Qaeda is much more complex than we have been led to believe. That Osama bin Laden is at best the dupe of Western intelligence forces and likely their collaborator. That he may in fact have died shortly after 9-11 and that his all-pervasive Al-Qaeda organization, with its alleged link to seemingly every terrorist incident in the world today, is in fact a media creation, a childlike simplification of a complex web of organizations led and populated by double agents and fictitious characters. The truth is that Al-Qaeda, as we have been led to understand it, does not exist. Even bin Laden's displays of strength for the Western media were faked. 
the fighters in this video had been hired for the day and told to bring their own weapons. For beyond his own small group, Bin Laden had no formal organization until the Americans invented one for him. The reality was that Bin Laden and Ayman Zawahiri had become the focus of a loose association of disillusioned Islamist militants who were attracted by the new strategy. But there was no organization. These were militants who mostly planned their own operations and looked to Bin Laden for funding and assistance. He was not their commander. There is also no evidence that Bin Laden used the term Al-Qaeda to refer to the name of a group until after September the 11th, when he realised that this was the term the Americans had given him. The idea, which is critical to the FBI's uh, prosecution, that Bin Laden ran a coherent organisation with operatives and cells all around the world, of which you could be a member, is a myth. There is no Al-Qaeda organisation there is no international network with a leader with carders who will unquestioningly obey orders uh, with tentacles that stretch out to sleeper cells in America, in Africa, in Europe. Um, that idea of a coherent, structured terrorist network with an organised capability simply does not exist.